Well, it's a gorgeous autumn day here in the Pacific Northwest. It's cold and, um, you know, despite the fact that I haven't released a video about the motorhome for a few weeks, I've been filming stuff. So I have a lot of clips to edit together and hopefully I can turn them into a cohesive and entertaining uh, video for everyone. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to go back a few days uh, to when I drove the motorhome to the paint shop and the welder to see about getting those jobs professionally done. See if it would be worth it to pay somebody. Um, spoiler alert, it's uh, very expensive. <laughs> so I think we're probably going to continue DIYing everything, which means that, yeah, although I do have some, some pretty good skills uh, and you can probably learn a thing or two from, from my experiences, uh, I am doing some things that I'm are really out of my comfort zone, like welding, but I, th I think I'm getting there. The welding's improving. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Let's jump right in. All right. Doing the old monthly startup routine. Gonna pump up the, uh, the suspension. You see it sags. It sort of bleeds down over time with these 40 year old airbags on it. This is diversified welding here in Vancouver, Washington. Really friendly guys can, can get the job done if you need something welded in. Welding those little patches into the into the sides of the motor arm is going to cost me almost as much as it cost me to buy that welder. Look at what I just did. I just did that first try. So awesome stuff. Good penetration for the most part. This was the start of the weld. It's not quite penetrated enough, but that's pretty good. And then that's overly hot. So too hot there. Um, so I, I, I need to do it in spurts, but that is completely serviceable. Um, I can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Let's talk about this front end. Do you guys remember when I jacked it up and um, was wiggling it to feel if there was any play and there was a tiny little bit of play. So that wheel bearing is suspect. But even worse than that, on these last trips around town, uh, the brake caliper here clearly has a crack in it. It's a There's a clunk, clunk, clunk as I brake and it slows down the slower the speed of the, the, the motorhome is. So it goes clunk, clunk, clunk as I'm slowing down. Um, so yeah, everything up here needs replacing from the bushings back there to the brake rotor to the axle, uh, actually just the, um, the bearing. So we got three major components that need to be replaced, which means a complete front end overhaul. And the worst thing about this front end is that the CV joints are made out of 100% pure unobtainium. <laughs> we cannot buy those. The best thing we could do is switch them from the side to side because they are exchangeable. So they'll wear a little bit differently on the left side versus the right. But uh, this is a part that's already unavailable and going forward, it's gonna continue to be even you know harder and harder to, uh, to work with. So I think I might wanna upgrade that instead of just rebuilding what I have. The other thing to talk about is these patches of body filler. Now, the motorhome is made out of aluminum. This is this sheet's aluminum, and this is sheet molded compound or fiberglass. So those two materials don't rust, which means this motorhome is far more weather resistant than it would be if it was made out of steel. So I don't have to worry about like raw steel rusting, but these body filler patches are still going to degrade if they continue to get rained on all winter long. So if I'm not gonna paint this thing like today or very soon. I need to do something to cover up all of the raw body filler. And also it would be a good idea to cover up the raw patches of um, fiberglass of the sheet molded compound. So probably going to need um, to put some primer on all of these moments. I'm finally getting around to installing these red marker lights here on the roof at the back of the motorhome. And you know, in a previous video, when I talked about uh, the problems getting the hole drilled uh, to receive those lights. Somebody suggested that I use a step drill, and I have one of these. And this is the drill that I used um, to drill out the headlight buckets to put that cable in just a little while ago. So yeah, I mean, I know what it's gonna behave like going through this SMC, and the hole is not as clean as I need it to be because I need a nice, clean hole 
with nice vertical sides to seal up against this rubber grommet, otherwise I get leaks. So it's really important that I have a clean hole, and that means I need to rely on this uh, Forstner bit like I was doing before. So you can see what I've done is I've cut these um, smaller you know, chunks of plywood with the uh, correct size pilot hole to receive the, uh, the Forstner bit. So that will slide right down in there and it will guide the Forstner bit perfectly. And in order to keep this centered on the hole, I'm using my hot glue gun here and just uh, putting it on the corners, which holds it well enough. Let's talk about paint because as much as I love this motorhome and as cool as it is, it is a 42 year old vehicle and I don't know how much utility I'm actually gonna get out of the thing. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend $30,000 just to put a shiny surface on the thing. So uh, what are my options? First of all, I can Plasti Dip it. And for those of you who don't know that this exists, basically Plasti Dip is a rubbery coating that you uh, was originally developed for like coating wrench handles or, or pliers or whatever. And then somebody figured out that you can thin it down and spray it on a car. And when you're done, you can just peel it off like a giant sticker. It looks like it's vinyl, but it's not. It was a product that was sprayed on. Now, these guys are the pros and this is their show car that they repaint once a week. So they are very good at uh, painting this car in particular and peeling it off. It's not as easy as it looks, according to people who have already done this and tried this product on GMC Motorhomes. I could do it though. It's gonna cost probably, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars in materials. I still have to spray it. I still have to do all the prep. However, Plasti Dip is it has a thickness to it, so it would tend to hide some of those paint chips and the like texture underneath them. So that's where the expense of a paint job is gonna come into. It's just the hundreds of hours of sanding because for typical very thin automotive paint, you can't have a single blemish. It's all gotta be sanded perfectly smooth. So yeah, Plasti Dip is an option. I don't like it. It's gonna be temporary and it's gonna be a whole lot of work. Oh, and did I mention that it looks like a car coated in rubber because that's exactly what it is. Now, these guys in the video are very good. These are the professionals and they've got some like wax coatings or something and they're able to make their uh, paint jobs look like normal paint, at least on camera. So I've only ever seen one Plasti dipped car in person and it looked like crappy rubber paint job. Um, so it's difficult to peel off. It looks like rubber. And with all the prep and the spraying and all of that, I don't see it as being uh, any less labor intensive than the real true paint job, uh, like an, an automotive paint job style. The next option is a bed liner paint job. So you guys know bed liner. It's a polyurethane. It's real thick. It's ultra durable insanely durable and probably the most popular brand for uh, bed liner paint jobs is this Raptor liner brand. Uh, you've heard of Rhino liner, but that that's mostly for actually <laughs> coating your bed. Raptor liner seems to be the preferred one for the paint jobs. And you know, this is what it can look like when it's all said and done. This is a Jeep, but this is painted black and there's no way I'm painting my motorhome black. It would just be murder to try to live in that thing in the desert or, you know, on any kind of a hot day. So, uh, the color's a no-go, and I think with white, it's just, you know, the white and the texture, it's it's gonna look cheap. I could do some sort of like a green camo, maybe harken back to the EM50 from the movie Stripes, where, you know, most of us probably learned about how cool this motorhome is. Um, but it's just, I'm not, I don't want it to look like, um, you know, a redneck off-road mobile, like that, um, what do they call it? Primer paint job, or the camo, the flat green camo paint job. I just, that doesn't, that's not the aesthetic that I'm going for. So I think uh, as nice as, because it's durable and it's easy to just, you can roll it on. So because of those two reasons, uh, it's attractive as a paint job, but I just, I'm not gonna like the final result. I know that. So Rhino liner or whatever, a, a bed liner paint job is out. So what other option do I have? It's pretty much, if you want a shiny, glossy paint job, you have to go do it the automotive way, right? Not so fast. There might be another option. From the world of boat building, there's this product. This is called Perfection from Interlux, and it's a roll-on polyurethane. So bed liner, polyurethane. This stuff, polyurethane. More or less the same product. Super durable. Um, 
pretty thick, thicker than, than your um, automotive paint. Um, still requires some prep work, but it's different. You're basically going to use like thickened epoxy. They call it fairing in the boat world, which they, that, that's what they mean when they say smoothing, you know, filling it up with like something that has a thickness to it and then sanding that smooth. So there's a whole system uh, that goes along with this product and it's made for fiberglass boat hulls. Well, hey, about half of that motorhome is made out of fiberglass, right? So I don't know why nobody's thought to turn to the world of yachting for a paint job on a GMC before. You can roll it on, it comes out perfectly smooth and glossy, and it's as durable as it needs to be for boats baking in the hot Caribbean sun or suffering through, you know, freezing st ice storms up in the North Atlantic. Like this stuff is, it's bed liner, but it comes out glossy. It's awesome. So I think I found a total winner and I'm super excited uh, to do it this way. So let's head down to the local West Marine, which is the closest uh, yachting boat supply store to me. And we'll pick up some uh, epoxy primer, which is the you know, substrate that you need uh, for this paint. That is an Oldsmobile Toronado that just happens to be sitting here in the parking lot here at West Marine. Now, for those of you who don't know why I'm so stoked to be seeing a junky old car, it's because the Oldsmobile Toronado is kind of the only front wheel drive muscle car that was ever made. And it's the front end originally designed for the Toronado, which made the GMC motorhomes possible. So without the Toronado, we wouldn't have GMC motorhomes. Well, it's pretty awesome that West Marine had this in stock, but holy crap, this stuff is not cheap, 108 bucks. So that stuff seems expensive, but I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to stretch this uh, this primer, this two-part epoxy primer. I might be able to do all of the rig, the, all the parts that need to be primed with this, I might be able to do it with just what I bought today. So that should be good. And the total cost to paint the motorhome with this paint system looks like it's gonna be around $2,000, maybe $1,500 if I'm lucky. So yeah, this is, it looks like a total winner. It's like the least expensive. I can roll it on in my driveway and it's the most durable, like second only to bed liner. So it's just, it seems awesome. I'm really excited. We'll be covering more and more of this paint job in the, uh, in the coming videos, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, let's talk about something else. I have a ton of problems to solve with the driven front wheel drive, um, you know, front end out there at the A-arms. Uh, the bushings are all severely dry rotted. The CV joints, while they seem fine, they're irreplaceable. So if they do fail, I cannot get replacements. Um, the brake caliper is cracked on one side at least, and the wheel bearings are suspect. They are, you know, there's a little bit of play in them, so they probably need to be replaced. So given just how many problems I have up there, I think it's a prudent decision to upgrade to more modern technology. And thankfully, Manny, for those of you who are involved in the uh, in the community around these GMCs, you guys know who Manny Travau is. Anyway, Manny offers this kit uh, that will use modern components like from a 1996 GMC truck and other such things in combination with some custom machined parts. But uh, overall, it's an adapter kit that puts some modern uh, drive driveline components up there at the front wheel drive. So yeah, big thanks to Bill Hubler for developing this whole kit to begin with, but Manny's the one who sells it now. And it looks like it's gonna cost me, I don't know, $1,600, $1,800, $2,000, I don't know, hopefully, hopefully on the lower end of all that, but we'll see. Um, anyway, this is the instruction uh, document. It's a dot doc, just a word document. It tells you what to buy, has pictures. You're gonna, you know, grind some things off. You're gonna take some things apart. And Manny says that he can do these in about four hours, uh, both sides. So two hours aside, but he's done a ton of them and he's really fast. So for me and for you, probably gonna take us a whole day per side. So I'm, I'm gonna budget two days of my life, maybe more if I'm doing this out in the rain in my driveway uh, this winter. But anyway, I'm gonna order these parts up and get them delivered. It's a 300 pound crate uh, with all the parts. It's all the A-arms and everything that have been modified. So once you put the new ones on, you have to put the old ones back in the crate and ship those back to Manny as the, the core so that he can he can upgrade yours for the next guy. So yeah, so this is this is coming up in some videos as well. Look at, look at all these instructions, <laughs> oh, good Lord. Yeah, so that's gonna be a heck of a project, but I think I will be happy with the results. So let's um, 
let's take a tour around the city. You guys know I do these bike rides with my son. And in the last couple of weeks, we've seen some really cool motorhomes around town. Let me show them to you. Are we on a bike ride? Yes. Do you want to talk about that truck right there? Yes. Well, tell them about the truck. Is it a four-wheel drive? Yes. Is it a Unimog? Yes. Look at that thing. A zombie apocalypse house with a zombie apocalypse survival rig from, I don't know, the 70s maybe? That is one tough truck. It can go anywhere. We're riding past this play park. And right across the street, we saw two sweet old vintage motorhomes. And I thought we'd go knock on the guy's door and see what the story is for those. Let's go check it out. This is a 1973 Dodge Discoverer 25. There's 1,500 of them made. I think there's only a few hundred left. Air suspension, all four wheels. It's got lots of new stuff in it. They go in and out and they go like this. Like that also. Can you tow with it? I've never tried, but it had, like, it had a tow bar, but now it's got a slid out the bumper so you can put motorcycles and bicycles on it. Nice. It's got your, what do you call them? The halo lights. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can see those. I just put those in mine, too. And Only the grills of a 59 Imperial. Put an air compressor in it. You could hide a body up here still. <laughs> yeah. Only motorhome ever developed in an aircraft what? Military aircraft wind tunnel. Look, it cracked. Yeah, the windshield's cracked, huh? Why? This windshield, because it's a hard to find windshield. It runs good, drives good, stops good, it's good tires, good motor, everything works. And a great bit of space back here. Hey, kiddo, what do you think of this one? Do you like it better than ours? Yes. Oh, you like it better than ours? Uh -huh. Well, that's unfortunate, because this one's not ours. We did everything. New how, cabinets. How many years into it? Huh? How many years into it? Six. Jeez. Do you keep it? I even customized the couch in order to fit on the motor. What's the motor in it? Dodge uh, Industrial 413. This was called a trav car. Yeah, I just put a four-wheel drive axle under the front and I bought a transmission for it. What's the axle taken out of? It's out of a one-ton Dodge. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, my apologies for the irregular upload schedule lately. I've been working really hard uh, on my main channel, the one that focuses on 3D printing. So that's why I've been kind of remiss as far as updates for everyone about the motorhome. But work progresses. It will continue to progress even in the rainy Northwest during this these winter months that are coming. So yeah, stay tuned. And in the meantime, click here for a video that YouTube thinks you want to watch and click here to support this channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And by the way, that'll be every two weeks for this winter. So tune back here in two weeks from now. See you later. Thanks for watching.